Adventures of Furry Man. Our last episode with Joey the Horse was pretty straightforward in its storytelling. Today we get a little more complex. Clark, look. Hmm, $15,000 home, huh? All you have to do is guess the number of jelly beans in the jar. As I said, we get a little more complex today. We have to guess the number of jelly beans in the jar, although Clark will pay the dollar for us. Then we'll spend the second half of the episode counting the beans. When the prize judges discovered they were actually shiny rocks and not jelly beans at all, they declared the contest fouled and kept all the money. They were never seen or heard from again. Oh, my, what a lovely house. Just the kind I've always dreamed about. It is nice, isn't it? But I never could guess all those jelly beans. It wouldn't be easy. Clark never could resist a sweet little old lady. He gives her a dollar and says, go in there and put this down on 2,845 jelly beans. She says, well, okay, it's your dollar. Thing is, we saw him using his supervision, so we know he already counted them. Clark Kent, professional jelly bean counter. What in the world got into you? It's not what got into me, Lois. It's what got into that store just a minute ago. Well, that certainly explains it. I was referring to that little character in there with the eyeglasses. All right, what about him? Unless I'm mistaken, he's an old-time confidence man named Slippery Elm. We've seen some names before that suggested someone's parents were a little sadistic, but these parents should have gone to jail for that. Clark says, let's hang around and see how this plays out. Sure enough, when the count is done, the number is 2,845. Slippery pulls out a ticket and says, I got within three with 2,842. I doubt anybody will get closer than that. Needless to say, he's wrong. What? He didn't win it? I did. I've got it exactly. 2,845. And my stub is right in that little box. You must be wrong, ma'am. Nobody could guess it exactly. Excuse me, sir. Ma'am, if you won the house, it's yours. I'll be by tomorrow with the deed. After everyone leaves, our host, our purported winner, and our guy who did the count are all flabbergasted. This wasn't supposed to happen. Clark has Lois walk the little old lady to her next destination so he can listen in. I know it's impossible, but she did it, didn't she? Yeah, and I got an idea how. What do you mean, Slippery? We had it all rigged, right? I was supposed to win. Miss it by three just to make it look good. And then us and the boys split up all the money, right? Get to the point. The point is, only three of us knew the exact number. And one of us decided to cash in on it. That means their third man is the chief suspect. His name is Dexter, and he just happens to rent a room from the little old lady who won the house. He's just coming home, and the lady's son, Bobby, is telling him all about it. Dex, they shot you. They shot you. Yep, the bullets bounced off. We'll learn it's because he's wearing a bulletproof vest that looks to be almost six inches thick, but Bobby is sure he knows what really happened. You're Superman. Are you? Guess there's no sense to deny it, Bobby. That's right. I am Superman. He swears Bobby to secrecy and says no matter how things look, no matter what seems to be going on, just trust me and don't tell anybody anything. Bobby gives his solemn promise. Well, I'm a police officer. One of your neighbors called, said he heard shots. You know anything about that? No, sir. Yeah, probably just a backfire. Now, who lives here, uh, just for the record? Me, I'm Bobby Exbrook. My grandma and Dexter Brown. He rents a room. Only he's kind of like my brother. Oh, have they been in all night? Yes, sir. That solemn promise includes lying to the police. But that begs the question, why would they send Inspector Henderson to check out a routine noise complaint and not a uniform officer? And in keeping with my ADHD brain, I'm going to digress into a bit of language grumbling. I hear the phrase all the time, especially in YouTube videos, it begs the question. And most of them are using it wrong. In most cases, what they mean is that raises the question. When something begs the question, it means we're avoiding it. It means we won't get any answers because the situation is designed not to give us any. It begs us to ask the question, but there's no opportunity because the situation deliberately avoids it. 
I know language is constantly changing and I'm not trying to be prescriptive here. Within another 10 years or so, it's possible the expression will have completely changed meaning. But it hasn't happened yet, so I can still whine. Early this morning, police investigated a reported shooting in front of 18 Sycamore Street, the residence of Mrs. Clara Exbrook, her grandson Bobby, and Dexter Brown a border. Apparently... Well, wait just a minute. Did you say Dexter? No. Why? Oh, nothing. It's uh, kind of an unusual name, not the kind you hear a lot, that's all. Lois came in to show him the story because she was pretty sure Clara X. Brooke and their house winner are the same little old lady. With a guy named Dexter involved, there's way too much coincidence. Superman will fly over and do some investigating. Hi, what are you doing back here? I've never been here before. Hey, you look different. You even talk different. I've always looked and talked just like this. Oh, I get it. Uh, you wear a disguise when you're Superman. He says, I know you're testing me, but I'm not about to say a word. Superman says, I don't know what you're talking about, but tell me the truth. Did anything happen around here last night? I mean, like a shooting. Ah, uh, you know what happened. Yes, but perhaps you better tell me again. Okay, I'll tell you. If you'll bend this horseshoe. He makes Superman do a bunch more feats of strength until our man finally says, enough. Nothing. Nothing at all happened. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, look, Bobby, it's a little public here. Could we go inside? Sure. But I don't know what you're testing me for. I said I wouldn't tell. Naturally, since he's convinced this is Dexter, he takes him to Dexter's room. Why don't you take off your disguise now? What's the matter? Oh, uh, nothing, Bobby. What did you just ask me? I said, do you want to take off your disguise? Bobby, I don't know what is going on here, but just who do you think I am? He's pretty sure he knows the answer since he saw the vest in Dexter's closet, but the only way he's going to straighten this out is if he gets Bobby to say it. I don't think I know. <laughs> You're Superman. Bobby, you have all the makings of a very good lawyer. Lawyer nothing. He's a teenager. They can talk your average lawyer under the table and leave him questioning his life choices. I've just been talking to Inspector Henderson, and he seems to think that some of these raffles and jelly bean contests around here are phonies. Could be. Oh, what do you want us to do? Snoop around, buy a lot of tickets. Get a line on the operations. It may lead into a story. Right. You just leave it to us. Oh, naturally, naturally. I'm just the editor. I wouldn't think of telling my reporters what to do. Does that mean you're going with them, then? Last I heard, it's your job to give them the assignment and then do exactly what Lois said, leave it to them. But as usual, Perry doesn't know what he wants. He just feels like coming down on somebody and Jimmy isn't around. I didn't mean that, Chief. Just get the story, Miss Lane. That's all I ask. The story? Yes, sir. Clark just got back from his visit with Bobby, so the two of them are off to buy raffle tickets. Meanwhile, Bobby is starting to wonder about his friend Superman, a.k.a. Dexter. The last ticket in the book. That's lucky. I hope so. <laughs> Remember what he said about that ticket. Hi, Mr. Vaughn. How many did you sell today? Eight books were. Okay, let's have it. How about me? Huh? You get paid at the end of the week like always. But I'm a little short now. Keep talking that way, you'll be a lot shorter. Superman mob enforcer doesn't fit Bobby's picture of the guy. What's up, Dex? Boots tried to get me killed last night. Killed? That ain't very nice of the boss. How come you fell off the popularity list? I'm not sure. Somehow my landlady managed to win the jelly bean gimmick. Boots must have figured I was playing both sides of the street. Or was you? No, but I am now. He made his collections a few days early, and he plans to use the cash to set himself up and take over. It's probably a good thing, because Boots is a bit of an idiot. If he suspected Dexter had sold out, the first thing to do is haul him in and ask him. But if you don't want to do that, the instant you realize the shooter didn't get him, you haul him in and talk to him. If you just leave things the way they are after you tried to murder him, this is going to happen. But right now, Dexter has a more immediate problem. You act like you got hold of a rattlesnake. Maybe I did. We had it fixed so 19065 went into the drawing and one of our boys would collect. So? 
So when I know six five's already been sold. Guess who bought it? Last ticket in the book, as the man said. Except that book wasn't supposed to go on the market. Somebody goofed, huh? Lois Lane, 22 Wood Avenue. Let Woods worry about it. He's the one that's stuck with it. I'd like to, except for one thing. This girl's a reporter. Now that ain't good. If she don't win a prize, it'll be smeared all over the newspaper. After that, we'd never be able to sell another raffle ticket in Metropolis. And now our bit part player there gets to deliver the best line of the episode. Best line of the season so far. Your landlady wins the house. This dame wins the automobile. If this keeps up, we'll be running a legitimate racket. Whoever wrote that line deserved a bonus, and my own little opinion is this guy should have gotten an Emmy for the way he delivered it. And if I may ask a big, bold question, why would that be a bad thing? Bobby, won't you come in and have some dinner? I'm not hungry, Grandma. Dexter, maybe you can get Bobby to eat. Oh, it's too hot to eat. Here's a couple of bucks advance rent. Take him to a show at the Majestic. It's air-conditioned. Well, I would like to see the picture, and maybe it'll make Bobby feel better. I'll just be a minute. Now that she's out of earshot, Bobby has a few things to say to Dexter. He says, I followed you today. Superman is a crook. When I'm Superman, I help a lot of people, right? I guess so. So I got a right to a little something for myself, don't I? Besides, Superman helps a lot of people, spends a lot of money. It's sort of like I'm financing Superman. That makes sense, doesn't it? Bobby isn't buying it. He says, I used to be proud that I knew Superman. Not anymore. Dexter suddenly realized he was Superman, picked Bobby up, and bent him into a pretzel. Sorry. No conversation, Miss Lane. Just turn around and keep walking. There's a kid over there who's bent into a pretzel and you have to unbend him. For reasons I will never grasp, he takes her back to his room in the Axbrook house. Let her alone. She didn't do anything to you. What are you doing here, Bobby? Grandma fell asleep and I sneaked out of the show. Well, as long as you're here, you're going to have to stay a while. Get over there. Why do I have a feeling his pal ratted him out? Now he's in trouble. There's only one thing to do, hide in the closet. There's nothing to worry about, Miss Lane. He only hid so you wouldn't learn the secret. He's got naughty magazines in there. Where is he? Where's who? Uh, I'm just waiting for his grandmother. Another smart dame. Look in the closet, Slippery. It's locked. Maybe the kid's got the key. How about that, kid? If you think he's in there, why don't you shoot through the door? Dexter's expendable. Just try not to hit any centerfolds. Okay, open the closet. Let's see what's inside. Surprise, gentlemen. Bobby tells Lois, well, now you know the secret. You can come out now, Dexter. Dex! Now I know I'm crazy. I'm not Superman, Bobby. That was a lie. The real Superman broke into the closet from the back and protected me from the bullets. Bobby says, why did you lie to me? I don't know, Bobby. I guess it made me feel like a big man. And I guess when I turned crooked, it made me feel like a big man. But now I know I'm just a little man. And I'll take what's coming to me. I have a feeling he and Superman had a long talk in that closet. And when Superman looks you in the eye from six inches away and says, you're going straight, you go straight to the bathroom before you wet yourself. Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Be sure to click that like button and let me know you enjoyed this. And if you're not subscribed yet, you know what to do. You can also become a patron and help support this channel. The link is below. Thank you for watching.